for me. I'll let a couple more people into the meeting. All right, before we get started, uh, are there any matters where the parties are going to ask for a continuance? I am, Your Honor, Kyle Lopez. All right, so that's Kyle Lopez and Juanita uh, K. Vasquez. Friend is yes. his friend here. You represent Ms. Friend, Ms. Gilmore, okay. We were before the court last week. Um, father objected to the set over. The court subsequently set this over one week. Um, I turned around and got a response out, I think, the same day or the next day. Um, so I'm somewhat apprehensive about setting this over as, um, again, we were just before the court last week and I, my client paid for a quick turnaround. Um, but obviously this is Mr. Lopez's motion. All right. Mr. Lopez, why are you asking for a continuance? Uh, I just got this response in the mail on Saturday. I wasn't given any time to respond, including the 20 days that I should have. Um, as much as I'd like to get this taken care of today, it is it is affecting my work. I'd like to post like it on it so I can get the declarations filed. I'd also like to ask permission to show the video and audio recording that took place that day. If any video or audio recording was done, it was without my client's consent and in violation of Washington State statute, which would be a crime. Um, so I would object to that, uh, but... Again, if, if he only received it on Saturday, it was my understanding my staff should have emailed that as well as mailed it. But um, if he wants the opportunity to respond, I guess we could set this over another week. In our declaration, Your Honor, the respondent, the, one of the witnesses said that they were recording as well. So uh, there won't be any other continuances in this case. Um, also, if you have um, video or audio recordings, you need to provide that to Ms. Gilmore uh, by the end of this week. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Otherwise, uh, if she has not received it and had a chance to review it, I will not consider it. All right. So let's okay. first call Curtis, Curtis Hart and Catherine Hart. Hart. I think they're both here. And um, Ms. Call is the guardian ad litem. Um, I think I've set this on for today just to make sure there was contact with Ms. Call and that we're moving forward on the guardian ad litem report. Um, Ms. Call, do you want to respond? Yes, I've been able to do um, home visits with both parties. I've been up to kiddo's school and met with uh, his teacher. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to bring attention to the court that I uh, found out in my home visit at dad's house, at Mr. Hart's house, that um, uh, kiddo is actually not living with dad. He lives across the street at his grandparents' house. Um, yesterday, I received third party information that there's a pretty serious uh, health diagnosis that's been given to grandma. <clears throat> and so I need to do a little more investigation to make sure that that's accurate and true. Um, I'd also like to, based on the investigation at this point, I'd like to request, uh, I asked Mr. Hart if he'd be willing to submit to a hair follicle test based on some allegations that have been made. He said he would not. So I'd like to ask the court to order that as well as a mental health assessment. <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned that this diagnosis of grandma's is going to deeply impact Eric's living situation. So I want to make sure that um, going forward, if we have to make some living adjustments, that there's a healthy, safe place for him to be. Um, other than that, Mr. Hart has not provided me any collateral references to speak with. I've kind of just been finding these things on my own. Um, uh, at this point, I'm receiving lots of communication um, from Ms. Catherine Hart and have had interaction with all of her collaterals and have received um, her tests. Okay. Am I, am I frozen? There we go. Uh, yes. No, you're not. Um, I have that your final report uh, is scheduled for June 14th. Is that still a realistic date? Uh, if I could request two more weeks to get some, some test results back um, and to have time to do a little more investigation regarding um, the living situation for kiddo, that would be really helpful. Okay. Mr. Hart, do you want to respond to uh, the um, request by the JEL that you have a hair follicle test and a mental health evaluation. I don't mind. <clears throat> I don't mind having a mental health evaluation. I see no reason to have a hair follicle test. Um, just because I mean, she asked me if I wanted to submit, I don't feel like it's necessary. Uh, I don't use drugs. I don't have a history of drug use. I don't have a history of drug and alcohol abuse. Um, so there's just no reason for me to do it. Uh, if you're going to order it, I suppose I will, but I just don't feel like I need to prove my parenting to the state. I've been involved with Eric, you know, his entire life, not just a third. Um, so, I mean, if you're going to order it, I will. 
I don't see it necessary. I don't see it being, you know, I, I don't have money for it. The state doesn't need to spend the money on it. I'm not a drug addict. I've been in my son's life the entire time. Um, so if it's something that you're going to order, then I will, but I don't see it being necessary. All right. Let me hear from Ms. Hart. Any comment, uh, regarding this case? Um, just that I've, I've submitted months worth of clean negative, uh, UAs. I have absolutely no problem submitting to a hair follicle test. Um, I've definitely been clean and sober for longer than six months. And, uh, Curtis has used drugs since he was 12. And so I, I believe that his heavy use of marijuana does contribute to a lot of his anger issues. And I think it would be a, an excellent idea. Okay. Sometimes um, we- Ms. Hart hasn't had any contact with me in six years, so I'm not really sure what she's talking about. Your Honor, can I address this? Uh, sure, go ahead and then I'll make some decisions. The request that I'm making is not a direct result of Ms. Hart's accusations. I've, I've had multiple interactions with collateral parties who are concerned that drugs have been a factor and that there's very serious issues with anger management and harassment on Mr. Hart's part. Um, this is not coming from one source. Uh, can I ask I, who these sources are? Because this is court. This is a public court. I got to know who my accusers are. If he's saying that people are saying that I have anger issues and drug abuse issues, that's something I would very much like to know. Who's, who's saying that? I think those individuals will be identified when the report comes out. Okay. Um, let me uh, mute this person here. Okay. All right. Sometimes um, I will order a hair follicle test because we just want to have a level playing field to make sure where we're starting from. And if we're starting from a place of everybody's negative, that's great. Uh, but we need to have the test in order to determine that. So I think uh, it makes sense to do that. So I am going to order a hair follicle test. I am going to order a mental health evaluation. You can do that either at Columbia Wellness, I believe, or, or Core Health, and you can talk to them about having that completed. Um, I will uh, extend the time for Ms. Call to provide her final report to June 28th. I'm going to strike the hearing on June 14th. And um, if there's any issues that come up, you can always... Um, note a hearing in front of the court, but uh, in the absence of that, our next time together then will be on June 28th and we'll uh, review the report by Ms. Call. Thank you. So am I going to get like a court order for that hair follicle test and do I have to pay for that or what's going on with that exactly? Uh, that will be at your cost. Um, I will do a bench order for it. It'll be uh, available by tomorrow afternoon if you want to see the order. So is that something I can fill out a fee waiver for since it's being ordered on me? On me? I think you'd have to talk to the entity that does it. Um, um, I think, uh, well, I'm not sure where you're going to go to have that done. You'll have to talk to them to see if there's a, a way to waive that fee. I don't think I can do county pay on that. Even you're though right. you're, you're ordering it, you can't do county pay even though it's court order from the county? Yes. Uh, Ms. Call? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I think it should also be noted that Mr. Hart, told me in our interview that he is he and his wife, Amanda Hart, own a local spa in Kelso and that that is where he works and receives his income from. So while we were, and he- I he, don't receive income from there. That's not true. I never said let's, that. Let's let Ms. Call finish, okay? And then I'll let you respond. When I asked Mr. Hart how he supports himself and, and his son, his response was the the income from the spa that he and his wife own together and that he, is, he works for her and works there. Um, I only- give that information because this is now a county pay case and he is asking for more county pay support. Yes. That's because I qualify for that. I filled out the paperwork and I qualify. Therefore, there you go. Since you're bringing it up. You'll need to talk to the entity that's going to do the test to see if there's a, a way to get the fees waived on it. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll see you back here on June 28th. Thank you, your honor. Uh, next Thank let's you. go to Tegan Christinger and Haley King. I see Ms. King is here in the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Christinger, where are you? There you are. So I received a, a proposed parenting plan that looked like about equal time. Was that agreed to uh, or have you discussed it or is that something that we're going to um, have a, a argument about? Well, there should have been two. Mine is, mine is the one that should be equal time.
Miss uh, King, have you seen uh, Mr. Christinger's parenting plan? Um, I have it right in front of me, yes. I believe he's saying that one week uh, you would have Andrea's Tuesday to Friday, and the next week you would have Andrea's Tuesday to Saturday. Yeah. And that appears to me to be fairly equal, uh, if not slanted in your favor, parenting plan. Is that something you can agree to or are you going to dispute? Um, I So the only like problem I have with his parenting plan, because I have reviewed it, and I'm, I'm not going to push this into a trial. Um, the only issues with it is he also requested to be primary custodian, but it seems like I almost have the majority of the time with this parenting plan. And the summer schedule being one week interrupted, we should have two weeks of uninterrupted time. Um, everyone knows my parents' plan that I submitted was our parenting plan prior to this. Uh, but I am aware after talking to Miss Fellows that you guys do want a 50-50 schedule. Um, that's like, this is okay with me. Not ideal with me, but it's okay with me. Um, except for those two minor things there and then also um in my parenting plan i addressed my upcoming family trip for my to see my dad and my sisters graduate um i also wanted to kind of address that today so uh, you noted that decision making is joint in this proposed plan and each parent could spend one inter uninterrupted week with the child uh each summer so you noted those aspects of it. Um, Ms. Fellows, have you reviewed this plan? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I have. And in my estimation, it's pretty close to what they're doing now. Um, I would say for the summer that it could be um, two weeks of uninterrupted time, but that they not be consecutive. And... Yeah, I think it's a good plan. I think it's what they've been doing. They've been successful in doing this. So I, I think it's a good plan. I would agree as long as they're not consecutive. All right, so in the summer, we could say two weeks. You could say two weeks of uninterrupted time, vacation time with the children each summer, not consecutive. I would also suggest changing the dates from June 1st to make it a little bit earlier to May 1st, just for planning purposes, people going on vacation and things like that. Mr. Christinger, what if we move June 1st to May 1st, except this year, I think we probably have to make it May 1st or June 1st. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Your Honor. All right, anything else, um, uh, Ms. King? Yeah, I do have a family trip coming up that is three days long. When is that? It is May 19th through May 23rd. Mr. Christian, do you have any issue with that family trip? My issue is that it's uh, all the way in Las Vegas. It's it's in Arizona. Um, or, with yeah, Arizona. That's kind of, that's, that feels a bit too far for me, but as, as long as he's within his time window and he's back within our within our time a lot of time like it's your it's your you know your, your time to do what you want with him i would just i just hope he's not going too far out because i don't i'm not really comfortable with my son being that far away as it is but your honor it is not in my time zone that is why i'm requesting it is friday through tuesday and it's for my little sister's graduation and to see my father it's uh, what three days was it it is the 19th 20th 21st, 22nd, we come home the 23rd. We leave the night and come home the morning 23rd at 10 a.m. Okay. And your honor, in mom's proposed parenting plan that she provided, she did put the other, other and she did say family makeup time would be May 24th through the 25th. So she did incorporate makeup time for the dad. My issue is that I work on those days, so I'm kind of scheduled to like the days that I have within right now so i wouldn't really even get to spend time with him if unless it was on my specific days 
Okay, I'm not sure how this falls, um, but um, I think what we have to do is switch weeks a little bit. I am going to allow the trip to Arizona on um, May 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21, and 22, and also at 23. Um, and then uh, your Andreas will go back to Mr. Christinger on the 24th, or if you're home the morning of the 12th year. But by the 24th, and um, he will have them through the 30th. So I think that also incorporates one of Ms. King's days. And then back to Ms. King on the 31st and then with the schedule after that. All right, well, will this be in a report so I could put it in the calendar later today? Will there be an order, did you say? Uh, a report that I could uh, get later so that I can put this information in my calendar? I don't know what you mean by a report. I guess I'm. I'm well, I mean like like a, a summary for like you're saying all these like the different days for the calendar. I don't have my calendar on me right now, and I need to mark down the specific days you're saying. Your Honor, I can um, I can communicate with him um, to give him these dates. Um, the return date back to me though would actually be the first, not the thirty first, because that would be a Wednesday, and my days are Tuesdays. Your Honor, this is the GAL. I think that maybe uh, I could work with these parents to try to try to get this thing scheduled, um, given their different schedules and things like that. I could work with them to try to make it easier. So there is a makeup time. Mom could go to Arizona and dad should be able to get some makeup time if your honor is willing. All right. The, I, I will, I'm going to allow the trip to Arizona by the end of May beginning of June, I want all of the days that Mr. Christinger is lost to be made up. So that's the, the goal. How that gets accomplished, I'll let Ms. Fellows work with you on. Okay. Okay. You, all right. With that, I'm going to go ahead and sign uh, Mr. Christinger's proposed parenting plan. Okay. Which means it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday rather than Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, correct? Yeah, that's what you have there is Tuesday. Okay. I just, just want to clarify for Mrs. King so she's aware. It'll be a uh, Tuesday through Friday, and then Tuesday through Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to set another review hearing, but if anything comes up that you need the court to be involved in, um, go ahead and, and note a hearing, okay? And then work with Ms. Fellows over the next week to do the scheduling on the, the Arizona trip, all right? Sounds good. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Mr. Utter back? I am, Your Honor, and I apologize for my tardiness this morning. Oh, that's fine. Um, Mr. Lawrence is here. Is uh, Kirby Llewellyn with us? And honestly, I didn't expect any of the parties today. Um, Mr. Uh, Lawrence is asking for um, a 30 day um, continuance uh, to get his report out. Um, there was a hearing set for next week on the 17th. Um, it, it means there won't be any changes to the um, visitations until I get the report from Mr. Lawrence. And Mr. Utter, I wanted you to have a chance to comment on that if you wanted to. We last court date, we had talked about uh, phone calls once a week, then for two weeks, two phone calls after that for two weeks, which is where we're at now. Right. And then um, visitation starting next week. Um, would that still be? And then within a couple months, you would hope that he'd be spending the night. Is that, would that still continue? I guess go back to Mr. Lawrence. Do you have any concerns at this point um, where I should um, not order at least daytime visitations um, for a few weeks? Your Honor, this is a little bit complicated. Um, yeah. the, the child, um, in my opinion, uh, is trying to not upset either of the parents. And, and he's not been real talkative with me about his feelings in this matter. There, there, I see nothing that would preclude him having contact with his father. Um, and that the, the father uh, is making strides to try to improve the relationship between him and his son. 
and there's going to be some growing pains on this. And uh, Ms. Llewellyn has expressed some concerns about him hiding his emotions and not um, talking with her about what he's truly feeling. Um, I was holding back until I got full payment on this uh, before I uh, went any further with my investigation. I plan on going to the school in the next few days and, and meeting with Parker alone, away from the influence of both parents and see what I can get out of him. But as far as the order that was previously entered, I think we should continue with that because it's going to tell me where, where the, the, the problem areas are. Um, I don't see anything that is particularly dangerous for the child. It's just that um, the, the relationship uh, between him and his dad has, has been uh, interrupted and it's trying to restart and, and all of the issues about reconnecting and, and all of that. So um, I, I would advise the court to probably continue with the status quo. And should anything of significance arise in the next week or two, then I will certainly bring that back in front of the court. Um, Mr. Lawrence, we have a hearing that I had previously scheduled for May 17th. That's a week from now. Um, I'm inclined to leave that and see if you might be able to connect with the sun between now and then. And if you can, I understand. Um, I would like to consider uh, some amount of time where um, Mr. Utter can can be with his son um, before we get to the end of this um, matter. So, Mr. Utter, I'm not going to make any changes today. The uh, phone calls will remain, uh, but I uh, I'm going to keep the hearing on next week and. Um, Hopefully, Mr. Lawrence can meet with your son uh, yeah. for that, and then we'll we'll discuss uh, what changes we we can make, if any. I'm not going to promise that we're going to do any, um, but I um, I want to discuss it again next week. Okay. okay. Can I can I put a couple in here uh, words here? Sure. Uh, Parker is a very quiet kid, whether on the phone or not. He's he's really hard to talk to. He's shy um, to anybody, even his own mother over the phone. Um, but we have had a little bit of a breakthrough over these phone calls and I have kind of asked him if he knows why we're having these phone calls and he didn't, he had never been told why. And I would have thought that the GAL would have been able to explain to him why, if the parents can't. Um, but I was able to tell him a little bit as well as, um, talk to him about coming over tomorrow, or I'm sorry, possibly coming over next week with visitations, which time he, he is also on board with, it seemed to me, um, his brothers are very excited to see him and everybody's very excited to see him again. Um, with that said, to the other topic, as far as Keith and payment goes, continuing his investigation, um, had I known he was waiting on a payment, we could have paid that in full. He told us as long as that we were paid by May 10th, which is today, which is the day he was supposed to have his report in, that we can make payments. So we originally gave him $1,500 down, $200 a week up until last Thursday, which was the final payment of $100. So um, I know there's a process and it's lengthy, but to say we were waiting for a payment, um, that's that, that was never brought up to us that we were going to have to wait and prolong this longer for that payment. Had that been, like I said, we would have, one, I didn't know it was $3,000, which is a lot of money. Um, when I was told to pay, I, I was thinking hundreds possibly, but thousands is a lot, but we would have made that do, if you will. Um, so I guess that's just frustrations as a parent. And your honor, you had told me I would be frustrated with you. And that's a normal thing. Um, not that I'm frustrated with you personally. Um, but to have this extended another month after we've gone through the steps, we've done everything we were told we were supposed to do is, is kind of more frustrating, if you will. Not to lose my cool. I'm not losing my cool or anything. I understand the system. And if that's the way it has to be, it has to be. Um, I just um, don't know if there was professionalism there that didn't get relayed to us or, or what the case may be. If you have watched these, um, dockets for any period of time you'll know that there are a lot of cases that end up being continued um, right. the jails ask for more time it's it's very um common for that to happen and sure. it is, i understand a frustration for the parents and that's why i alerted you that that's likely to occur right um which but, i understand uh, there, this, this is a delicate situation um to have you step back into your son's life sure i need mr lawrence's uh guidance on that um and i need yours right so 
um, I'm glad that we're taking the steps we have um, and we need to come back next week and see if we can take another step. Okay. So next week, will he be able to come uh, for a three, four hour visit? Like we had said last. Well, or, we'll or I, just continue I'll, I'll hear from Mr. Lawrence and hopefully um, uh, just a minute here. Uh, Ms. Kurt, um, Ms. Llewellyn will be here and uh, we can all discuss uh, whether an in-person visit is something that can occur. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Edder. Thank you very Thank much, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Nicholas, you brought right, a to, uh, motion for contempt, and that needs to be personally served on Ms. Erlewine, and I haven't seen a um, declaration of service. Uh, do you know if that's been done? It's been done, yes. Been done? I, I didn't serve it. I didn't bring it back to the courthouse, Your Honor. So we kind of come to a resolution, and uh, it was uh, the, basically the visit stopped because I dyed my daughter's hair. So when I went and filed for contempt, we finally came to a resolution that the only way I can continue my visits is if I went down and got a hair follicle test. That goes back a year. It was negative for everything. I sent them certificates for my drug school and my classes. So I've gotten to see her for two weekends. We sat down um, about being better co-parents for her. But I just want it to be known that I'm trying really, really hard uh, to clean the mess up that I've made. And that regardless of her having a new husband or having full custody that I agreed to for my daughter, I do have rights to her as a parent. I don't want to, to be that any of that to be taken away just because they don't like something that I did. Um, her mother didn't like uh, the hair um, being dyed. I understand that. We're just uh, I'm working really hard to get back uh, to where I was at with uh my entire family because I have two other children involved and uh the 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 power over me kind of thing and uh, just being able to take away my visitations like that because we're all frozen. No. Mr. Nicholas, why don't you repeat what you just said? We all froze for a little bit. Um the visit stopped because I dyed my daughter's hair. So when I went and filed for contempt, we finally came to a resolution that the only way I could continue my visits if, is if I went down and took a hair follicle test. I went back a year. I, and I, uh, I I did get that part. Um, are you looking at putting together some sort of temporary or permanent parenting plan that would guarantee yeah. visits? We already have a final parenting plan established, and that's why I went down and filed the contentment paperwork. Right. So are you now going to start following that plan, or is uh, there a... it was It was my visitations. The, the reason of me not seeing my child was because I dyed her hair on my weekend. Right. And I went months without visitation, and I was just trying to get back on track to where I could see okay. my daughter. Back so do you want to strike today's hearing while yes. we're frozen? Um, do you want to strike today's hearing? Yes, I just wanted it on record that I, I'm doing all the steps that I needed to be doing and um, that I have rights, essentially. So that was my main point on, on uh, filing the paperwork. But yes, I would like to strike it. Okay. All right. Uh, I will strike it, and if you need to bring this to court again, you can do that, okay? Thank you so much, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, I see Mr. Entler. I'm here. Is Heidi Entler here? Yes. Ms. Turnbull is here. We're, my screen is freezing on occasion. I'm not sure why. Uh, Ms. Turnbull, do you want to tell me uh, where we're at on the investigation in Entler? Sure. I have met with uh, both parents. I have met with all of the children. I've done home investigations. Uh, Mr. Entler did complete the hair follicle test and I filed that last Friday. So hopefully you have a copy. It is negative. So that's fantastic. Uh, and so I'm progressing in the investigation. I um, My one concern at this point is that the children uh, have reported to me that uh, mom's been drinking uh, some and that it's been increasing. And uh, you might be aware that mom uh, recently moved into her own apartment with the children after um, living in a community house and a sober house for some period of time after being, um, you know, graduating from a treatment program. And so um, that was all very successful. And um, so the concern right now is that um, 
you know, the children are reporting that she is drinking and that it may be increasing. And so um, Heidi is reporting that it only happened once and that the children are mistaken. So I think maybe we need to just address that and come up with a plan um, moving forward to make sure that that's, um, you know, that the boundaries are clear on what the expectations are. And if we have a concern about that, you know, maybe that we can order a um, a random UA or several random U UAs if we have a concern moving forward. But I would suggest that um, that it's clear that Ms. Entler not be drinking, not have any um, use of mind altering substances at all in her home or at all. Right. Mr. Entler, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Um, what is the current um, visitation plan with the children? They're supposed to be every other weekend and Wednesdays. Okay. Has that been occurring? What do you mean by that, sir? Have they been coming, you mean? And then, uh, Mr. Antler, you know you're on the, uh, what we call the trial setting docket at one o'clock this afternoon to uh, get a trial date on the order for adequate cause. Okay. And that's that's to go to court to discuss your parenting plan. It's too bad Ms. Antler is not here. I'm here. I think, um, with, Your Honor, she is here. Oh, I'm sorry. You are here. Yes. I, all right. Um, the guardian ad litem, Ms. Turnbull, has indicated that um, I should order um, a UA um, in the next couple days. Do you have any response to that, Ms. Antler? I'll do it. Okay. All right. It's heard me that um, you need to be back on a different docket at one o'clock in order to set a, a trial date in this case. I'd like you to do um, a UA by tomorrow at five. Okay. And the trial date's gonna be some weeks away. So, well, let's um, plan to be back here next week on the 17th. I wanna see the results of the UA to make sure there's no concerns that we need to address. Okay. Okay. And when you do the UA, please provide those results to Ms. Turnbull. And they should also be filed with the court, but I think Ms. Turnbull can uh, take care of um, filing those. Would that be okay? Mr. Rooney be fine. And okay. All right. We'll see you back here then. Um, yes, Your Honor, I'm here. All right. Uh, it looks like what both of you put on for today was uh, a motion to waive the GAL fees. Um, Ms. Rooney would like Mr. Rooney to pay all of it. Mr. Rooney has submitted financial declarations saying that it should be waived. Uh, yes. So Mr. Rooney, I'll let you go first. I, I currently make after taxes. I'm working through the temp agency about 400 bucks a week. I make under two grand a month. I'm currently trying to save up at the same time and get my own place. I recently tried to get uh, get my own place, but I didn't have enough income to get approved. So I am, uh, I am going to be starting a new job here next week that should help me get into my own place as well. Uh, Ms. Call, any, anything you want to add? Um, yes, actually, I have yet to receive any intake paperwork from Mr. Rooney. Um, I did have a home visit with Ms. Emerson yesterday, and there's currently a home visit scheduled with Mr. Rooney, but that visit won't be very helpful if I haven't received <laughs> his paperwork, um, because I have a lot of missing pieces at this point in time. I actually also, after talking with Ms. Rooney and reading through the case file and seeing what did happen with the CPS case and the law enforcement involvement, I'd like to request that, um, Ms. Emerson have, um, phone call visits um, handled through the Talking Parents app twice a week so that she can have more contact with her daughter. I believe she's in a position where that would be a good and healthy thing for both of them. What was the app name again, please? Talk Talking Parents. It's the app that Ms. Ms. Emerson downloaded it herself. She's engaging with it. Mr. Rooney has yet to respond on the app. So I'd like to request that that be a formal arrangement. Mr. Rooney, any response to that? Yeah. Um uh, when it came to when it came to the app, uh, I've had no communication with uh, with uh, Adanya. Uh, uh, she had been uh, talking with my 
my girlfriend uh, and they had been communicating back and forth. So I, I didn't think I needed needed to download the app. That's the only reason I haven't. And I did take the day off work so I could go down to the public library to print off that paperwork and fill it out. I did have a question for it. Correct me if I don't say it right, but Mrs. Kale, is it possible to give you the paperwork in person on Saturday when we meet? Because I don't have a, a scanner at home. So once it's filled out, I'll just have a physical copy. I can work with that. It'd be preference if it, it's the preferences that I get to read it before we meet, but I can, I can work with you on it. Yeah. If you have it available, then we can do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, Your Honor, there was a petition filed on Ms. Emerson's part um, regarding a protection order. Um, and she hasn't received any response on that. And I'd love to hear the outcome of that. When was that petition filed? Uh, I believe in our conversation yesterday, we found out it was... Ms. Emerson, do you recall the date you filed that paperwork? Um, I don't remember exactly. It was in my response to Christopher's uh, petition to change the parenting plan. It was at the end of March, beginning of April, Your Honor. It, was that in this case or a separate protection order? Uh, Your Honor, I actually remember this. Uh, we, uh, uh, we decided not to do it, to take it to court, and we were going to handle it with you instead. And so we went with your arrangement. Um, I did file it in the family law. Okay. Because I do believe we struck the uh, change the parenting plan that I originally filed, and we were going to work on uh, just casually adding more time for mom as time went by. And that's what I'm referring to in using the the Talking Parents app, so that there can be more communication. I think that's a good first step. Okay, let me uh, just see here. Well, we had the hearing on the protection order on March 27th, and I indicated I wasn't going to be terminating the protection orders until the hearing in the family law case occurred. And then we did hear this case. And on March 30th, I did terminate the protection order because I thought the protections that needed to be in place were uh, occurred in this case. All right. Um, excuse me, your honor. Um, so that, um, that protection order was from Christopher, um, on myself and my son from my daughter. And I do have everything like how you had terminated it and everything. Um, but in my response to Christopher's, uh, motion to change the parenting plan, that is where I had asked for a protection order as well. The response was filed on March 24th to the, um, motion to modify the parenting plan it was motion for adequate cause and there was a request for a protection order i think that's still pending uh right now that that hasn't been decided would be decided um at the time we make a determination on adequate cause and it looks like i haven't made that determination yet all right um go ahead uh, mr rooney and then uh, i want to go forward here. Okay. I, I don't believe there's no need for a protection order. I don't go around her. I don't even do the communicating with her. My girlfriend handles that. I see no reason for a protection order. Okay. I'm not citing that. I'm, I am acknowledging that it was requested in the response that was filed in March of this year. Um, Ms. Call has indicated that Ms. Emerson should have some phone calls. I believe it was twice a week. Um, through talking parents. And um, I think uh, I would like to order that. Mr. Rooney, that means you'll need to download that application or ha have it available um, for Myra to use uh, in some capacity. I guess the next thing that um, I'm going to ask, because there's always issues about this, is when should those phone calls occur? And um, let me start with Ms. Emerson. Uh, if you were to give me two convenient times when you'd like to make those phone calls, what would those be? Um, anytime in the afternoon. Um, I would prefer during 
the weekdays since you granted me uh, the first and third weekend of every month. And I've been trying to get Myra every Wednesday um, as long as she doesn't have any plans or anything going on. Um, I'm, I'm just going to put this out. Uh, would Monday and Thursday, um, say four or five o'clock, would that work for you, Ms. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Rooney, would those times work for you? So the only issue with that for me is uh, starting my new job. They're going to be 12 hour shifts, rotating shifts four on four off. So I may end up being at work at the time and not being able to make sure that the phone call is made. Okay. Can I speak to this, Your Honor? Can I go ahead, please? So I do know that Myra has a device that she can use that has apps on it. It may be possible that they could put, I don't know if that app will download to the tablet that she has, but maybe there's a possibility that Myra has that app on her tablet and can can engage in the conversation. Also, if if Mr. Rooney's um, fiance is the one handling communication, could she be the one that handles making sure that that call happens? Uh, the only issue with that is I'm not currently living with her. I, uh, at most my, my grandma could handle the, handle the phone calls, uh, or, uh, my dad, uh, when I'm at work, my dad picks her up from, uh, picks her up from school and they could do like Monday and Thursday, uh, right after school. Would four o'clock work for that? Um, Monday. Or does it need to be earlier? I don't know when she gets out of school. Probably around like three thirty, or uh, no, four o'clock would work. That'll give him time to get 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 to his house and and you know uh, make that phone call. All right. So I'm going to order the calls be Monday and Thursday at four p.m. And um, Mr. Rooney, I'm going to kind of leave it to you to work out with your support system on how to make that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there may be several people that that will have to to work through. Um, excuse me, your honor. Yes. Um, so that kind of raised a few uh, concerns for me. Um, if they are not living, if uh, Christopher and his fiance are not living together, um, where exactly is my daughter living? Um, and if Christopher is not there, then like what? There, there's a lot of concerns I have right there. Where's my daughter living? Who is she living with? Um, you know, why is she not with her father if she, is not living with him, but cannot come home. Your Honor, if I may, she wanted to keep uh, addresses off the table. I didn't have to put my physical address. We do go over to my fiance's house almost daily because I have kids with her and the kids hang out and they play. But my dad picks her up from school because sometimes my work hours drag on just like yesterday was a 12 hour shift for me. And I'm handling it the best I can, but I do have to work full time because I need to support my family. Um, I'm going to do this. Apparently, there's going to be a home visit uh, this Saturday. And um, after that, uh, Ms. Call can talk to Ms. Emerson and um, either, um, well, can, can explain what the living situation is. If that raises uh, concerns, then you can put this back on my calendar to address. I guess the last question is... Um, Ms. Cole, um, how long do you think you'll need to complete your report? Oh, I've got, I've got it scheduled for June 28th. Will that still be a realistic date? At this point in time, I believe so, Your Honor. I'm curious about the fee waiver and what direction that's going to go because I haven't received any payment yet. But I'm going to um, sign a fee waiver in this case. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, right now, I think that that's a realistic expectation. I'll do that right now. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. Uh, just one moment. Let me do this. And I don't believe that. Uh, uh, I do believe that Adonia does know where I stay because uh, she served me yesterday. She served my grandma while I was at work. And so she knows my current address. So I don't think that's such a big issue either. Because I was the only reason I knew about this court was because of Mrs. Kale. I wasn't served about this court date till yet last night. Uh, I got home from work about eight o'clock and uh, my grandma told me that I. Uh, I got served and the information was there. All right. The next court date is going to be June 28th. That's when we'll have a report by the um, guardian ad litem. Uh, the telephone visits need to occur until then. And uh, if something comes up that either party or the guardian feels needs to come to the court, 
sooner than you All can right, note great. that up and we'll address it. I put this over a week um, to get comments about the guardian ad litem report and I did not receive anything. Did anybody file anything? I did not. Uh, I, did not. I have been working on a response, but since we were held over a week, I wanted to see what you had to say today before I file anything. All right. Um, well, let's hear from Ms. Hyde. She put her report together. I'd like her to uh, discuss it and discuss her recommendations. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, my report was filed um, several weeks ago now and included interviews with particularly with the children and um, with both parties, as you could see, and with some collateral people. And if you... Um, if you go back to the, the um, one of the later pages, I'm trying to find it right now, the summary and conclusion on page 11, um, I, I tie it all together with the fact that the children have, they face, a, as I put it, a variety of issues of adversity that include the open animosity between parents. And I see that as a very key part of the difficulty in this case is that the parents have a great deal of trouble communicating even over the simplest things with each other. And uh, my hope is that that will calm down as they, they begin to use the third party app that I recommended. Um, the other thing is both parents have shortfalls in their parenting skills in that they both talked about the very difficult circumstances of their own upbringings and they are working to mitigate those, but those are definitely issues that, that can be addressed. Um, the other issue is the cramped housing with the father. He has been working on that and is continuing to work on that. And then finally, and most concerning is the proximity of um, the neighbor, the sex offender who's a neighbor and very dear friend of um, mother. Um, so those were the issues that caused me to put together the recommendations that you see there, which leaves Mr. Palmer as the primary parent with definitely some work to do. And then some visitation that is pretty tightly designed so that there is a minimum amount of necessary contact between the parties. Uh, I noted in our last meeting, Your Honor, that there was com some concern about the quality of the most recent two visits. One, I guess, couldn't really be called recent. It was around Christmas time. And then the, the only other visit that has occurred since then was um, just a couple of weeks ago. And during both of those visits, um, mom had other parties in the home. And that was disappointing to me because the kids really were discouraged by that. They wanted mom's attention and they were not getting it. And maybe, you know, maybe they're overreacting because it has been such a long time. But I think that's one of those parenting skills that needs to be upgraded that these, these visitations that hopefully will occur will be just with mom. And so uh, in my recommendations on recommendation number five, I don't know if your honor made a note of it, but I recommended that there be one minor change on that. Um, to strike, I think the words for longer than two hours. Correct. Yes. I just want to make sure that that was there. But um, other than that, that's that's the, the gist of, of what I wanted your honor to know this morning. Let me state a number of things. Um, first of all, on a temporary basis, uh, my intent is to adopt the recommendations of Ms. Hyde. Secondly, um, Ms. Palmer is interested in kind of getting to the end of this case. And the next step is um, you need to go through what's called a mandatory settlement conference before you can set the case for a trial if you need to do that. Um, and so the, um, I was going to put this on the uh, universal trial setting calendar today to set that mandatory settlement conference. I, 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 would, I would do that a week from now, and then you would need to, to schedule that. And then the order that I would enter would be temporary. You either would come to an agreement at the mandatory settlement conference, or if you can't, then you would go to trial and you would try all the matters surrounding um, um, this case, and the judge would make a decision. So having said that, I'm, uh, if either of you want to comment on that at this point, um, you can. Uh, if both of you say, fine, go ahead and do that, uh, then we'll do that and we'll 
we'll move forward that way. You said that it would be later today. What time? Uh, the um, the trial or the conference to set the mandatory settlement conference would be. I'd set it a week from today. Okay. All right. So what time? Uh, it would be at one p.m. I'm sorry. Is that better? Yeah, that's. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm good to move forward with that hearing for next Wednesday. Okay. All right. Can we put that on for the seventeenth? All right. So we put that on for the seventeenth. Then I'm going to enter a bench order adopting the recommendations of Ms. Height. And until there's a change either agreed to or, or entered by uh, the court, uh, you'll need to follow those recommendations going forward. Okay. okay. All right. I would like to know if Mr. Palmer has scheduled either doctor or dental appointments for the children in the last week since we talked, because when I called both the dentist and the doctor's appointment last Wednesday, neither of my children have had recent appointments. Lily did have a doctor appointment a few weeks back for an ear infection, but prior to that, neither child has had a well child checkup in over a year. Neither child has had a dentist appointment in over a year. Any response to that, Mr. Palmer? Uh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, I kind of um, dropped the ball on that last year. Um, I did try to make some appointments. Unfortunately, uh, I was never responded to by the Family Health Center. Um, so I, I'm still kind of working on that. But I, I'll actually, instead of calling, probably just go there today and uh, get some appointments made. Um, Mr. Palmer, try to schedule that in the next two weeks. And then um, I guess let Ms. Height know, and then um, she can let Ms. Palmer know. Yes, sir. We'll do. I would also like to know what parenting app was um, recommended for us to use. Preferably a free one. Your Honor, the one that I'm most familiar with is called Our Family Wizard, and it is not a free one. I know there's a good one out there that's free, and I don't know the name of it right off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I heard somebody say Talking Parents app. I was going to look into that. I do not I, know if it's free or not. Yeah. Um, the one recommended is our family wizard if the parties can agree to another one, but that would have to be fairly soon. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll agree to it. I, I, the point here is to have you able to communicate. Sorry, to I kind of lost you for a second. I just said, okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to enter an order and uh, the um, recommendations in this height will need to be followed. Okay. All right. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Can I also ask about Mr. Palmer's state of insurance? I got insurance a month ago. I already mentioned that. I'm aware that you said that you got insurance a month ago. However, a judge told you 17 months ago that you could not drive the children without insurance. So I currently have insurance. But you were continuing to drive the children for 17 months without insurance. Ma'am, if you think that he was in contempt of court because of that, you can bring a motion. But that isn't the issue that we're addressing today. Okay. All right. Here Thank you. Are. And is Ms. Croy here? Kylie saying that she has a problem getting on to the Zoom meeting. Oh, I see. I've got Kylie's uh, phone here. To, let's let her in. <laughs> so uh, we're here to um, check in on the unsupervised visits with Haven um, to see if the parenting classes have been complied with and how things are going in general and to see if we might want to make a change to the uh, visitations. Um, why don't I start with Mr. Lawrence? He's probably checked in. So, um, Mr. Lawrence, have you been in touch with the parties? Um, yes, Your Honor. I uh, received uh, the monthly, actually it was a, a summation of all of the weekly UAs and compliance reports for Fran over the month of April. And all of those, he is in compliance. All of his UAs were negative all the way around. And he is uh, doing really well. Okay. Mr. Pena, how have the visits been going? They've been going pretty well. Really good. And Kyle has been letting me have um, extra days. Yeah, we've been co-parenting outside the courts. Okay. Have you been, well, since you've been working together, have you had any overnight visits with Haven? Um, not yet. Yeah, I'm not ready for overnights just yet, but we've gone to the park all together. We've, um, we went to Vancouver together. We've, um, 
just been doing family activities, going out to dinner, just small steps. What would you like to see happen before overnight visits occur? Well, I mean, he's doing amazing. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say that he's not doing amazing because he's doing everything he needs to in the right aspects and has shown a lot of growth and improvement. My thing is, is I want to know that the growth is like a permanent thing. Like when we went to the park and stuff, I actually can see like how his parenting has changed versus when we were together. And I'm actually really proud of him and like really proud of his changes and everything like that. Um, it will just take a little bit more my behalf, if that makes sense. Mr. Pena, what's your uh, response to that? I kind of respect that. Okay. Haven, that was gross. Um, Mr. Lawrence, do you have any, what would you recommend at this point? Well, Your Honor, um, when the court looks back at where we started, um, there were a lot of issues here, a lot of anger on both sides. Uh, everything that I suggested to Fran in the way of services, he has complied with uh, he in himself and yeah. in, in those services and has done extremely well. Um, as the court may recall, um, Dr. Maharg did not recommend that he get beyond supervised visits. And um, we, we took a, a risk and the court went with me on that. And, and he has done extremely well with unsupervised visits and everything that, the, that anybody would ever hope to accomplish in, in a, a kind of a parenting plan for proceeding of this nature. Um, Fran has, has gone down that road in spades. Um, I, I can share or I can understand that Kylie has, does have some reser reservations still about overnight visits, but I think that that should be at least attempted here in the near future, uh, just maybe one night and, and, uh, and see how that goes. And then uh, basically if, if we're coming to a point in the next three months where he, Fran should be wrapping up his, his domestic violence counseling, his substance abuse counseling, I, I think at that point, we should consider removing all restrictions and just setting him up for a traditional parenting plan, including overnight visits. But until uh, we see at least uh, one overnight, maybe uh, each week, um, we, we won't know how that's going to go. So it, Mr. Pena has been extremely patient uh, with the court on this. Um, he, he understands that he had a lot of issues to deal with. He's He's more than addressed it, and, and I think, uh, and I do understand uh, Kylie's concerns about this, but I think in the near future, we need to consider at least one overnight per week. Okay. Well, let me tell you what, what I hear is that both parents are working together to, to make this work. And uh, I'm a, at some point, Mr. Pena is, uh, needs to start having overnight visits because at some point the court's not going to be involved and there's going to be um a yeah we've talked party. about this what's that we've talked about this we've talked about um timelines of when we would allow overnights and stuff like that and I, i'm i'm inclined to let the both of you work that out yeah because it sounds like you're working together on that yeah um i would like to see something um, you know, if, if everything is going <laughs> well, I'd like to see those started somewhere around mid June, if possible. Yeah. Okay. But I'm going to let the two of you decide that because I really like the fact that you're working together and, and you respect each other. All right. So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to give you some flexibility on that. I'd like to have us all get back together on June 14th at that's a Wednesday at nine o'clock and I just want to check in again and see how things are going okay um, right. wait, also I'm gonna get the parenting class done I just got an ID so that I can get a job so that I can do all of that okay good oh yeah also we I sent Keith something about the parenting class the when he recommend me to do us to do um it doesn't do online because I won't be able to do in person because I'll be missing work so there's another one what's it called 
the owner. When do you think you'll be able to take the time to do the parenting class? With the children in between. It's the class is called Children in Between. Would that work to be online? Because that's the only one online to do. Okay. I done love and logic. Um, I believe so, Mr. Lawrence. Would that would that work? Yes, both are accepted by the court. Okay. Uh, children in between is used exclusively in Pacific and Wakaikum County. It is used here. Um, it's a good class and would be acceptable. Okay, that would be acceptable then. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Ms. Croy, any questions? No. All right. Um, thank you for being um, working uh, with Mr. Pena on all of this. Mr. Pena, any questions? Can, Sir, can, I get, can I get another day with her or a little bit more time with her? Um, I'm not going to make that specific change. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that. I try to give him at least one extra day a week. Okay. Like if he asks for it, I always guaranteed give it to him. She does. I'm going to let the two of you continue to work together. And I don't, I don't want to do that to create conflict. I want to do that because you're working together so well. And I want to encourage that. Okay. okay. And then, um, Mr. Lawrence, any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. We'll be back here then on June 14th. Okay. I look forward to All seeing right. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Haven. <laughs>